good old lineage 2. Those of us who experienced it and are reminiscing the old days, or when you watch old PvP videos, you'll notice that ancient computers, 4x3 aspect ratio, CRT monitors, and frame rates hitting the single digits in any fight bigger than a 9 versus 9, things were definitely a little bit rough when you look back at it that way. And yet, if you were to ask people who played back in those days, they will tell you they were some of their greatest memories. For better or for worse, I love this game. I can never quite put my finger on why. Not the most social person, I tend to prefer or at least always end up playing solo, which for a game as team-based as Lineage 2 is, that means I usually don't get very far. The thing that makes this game tick for me personally especially is, is the class I was into playing, the Silver Ranger. To give you a short background, I started this game in November of 2005, which is late Chronicle 3 on a private server. That was the era where you could still drop your gear if you died to mobs, and yes, I have done that back in the day, and been very, very saddened when I went back to that location and someone had picked it up or it had vanished by that time. Uh, the server I started on, I started as a bishop at the request of my friends, who said, quote, it looks cool, unquote. I beg to differ as they put me in demon robes with dual swords on a bishop, imagine that. <laughs> Um, anyhow, within a month we moved servers and I wanted to play something a little bit more proactive. And I always liked bows, like archery in general is just really cool to me. And so I asked them for a description of the various archers. And the way they described it, I ended up picking the Silver Ranger as the somewhat faster paced playstyle appealed to me. And the rest, as they say, is history. Over the years, I've definitely learned a lot more about this game, and it's it's such an in-depth game that, to a point, you kind of never stop learning. Uh, but I have been some... For the most part, I have been what you could call a hardcore casual. Like, I played the game a lot, but I never took it too seriously. And I feel that I did not really start taking this game seriously until around 2015. At which point I felt burned by private servers. Um, the last one I played at that point was a low-grade interlude server, which had been up for a bit over a year. And looking at PvP videos from it, it had it had population, like there were big fights for sieges. Um, but after I joined, it died within a few months. And like every server since just followed the same trend. None of them really stood the test of time. In 2015, there was a project to make a Hellbound server called L2 Citadel. Probably nobody knows it, but that was what it was called. And it was in a closed beta test for about six months that I participated in. And during that time, I learned quite a lot about the game. And I took my first steps in the Hellbound areas, because back in the day on retail, I never got to the end game on Hellbound on old retail. And I, by the time, like, Grasha and stuff rolled around, I ended up going more to high-rate PvP servers, as I kind of felt the low-rate game didn't really attract me very much. So that's how I ended up not learning really anything about Hellbound until this server. During that closed beta test, I learned a lot about the game, and also some quests that I had never done before. Um, like, for instance, the Forest of the Dead questline, which gives you some mid-tier B-grade jewelry, but it has a really interesting story, which is something Lynch 2 doesn't really do very well. It doesn't, like, the story is very incoherent. Um, it's a bit random and scattered around the place. But this questline had, like, a self-contained, really interesting story. I can highly recommend it if you have the time. During those days, I kind of hyped myself up, thinking, like, Hellbound is basically Interlude Plus. It's Interlude with more of an end game to it. And I believed at that time that the reason interlude servers died as fast as they did was because people rushed to the end game, they got into a couple big fights, and then they just get bored and leave. And just to do it all over again on another server. And Hellbound, I believed, could buck that trend by providing more to do in the end game. In the end, though, this didn't work out either. The server died in three and a half months. They relaunched it again with the same exact everything, except slightly higher XP rates and changing literally nothing. Um, as you could expect, it died 
basically within a month at that point. The next chapter at that stage was Classic, which started also in December of 2015. And I was like, completely burned, done with private servers. Like, too many of them had failed me at that point. I was like, okay, this is a retail server. It's going to be hosted and online no matter what. Which should give people the confidence to invest time into it long term. And it wasn't interlude, it wasn't hellbound. But, like, it was an official server. And, well, Classic um, ended up, for me, a very big disappointment. It, it had, like, a lot of issues with it. Um, which, like, it had the veneer of being the old game. But it really wasn't the old game in any sense of the imagination. It was a complete reimagining of the game as a whole. And that was EU's classic servers. And these classic servers were even more of a non-starter for me, considering how paid to win they were. Which, along with the previous experience on the EU servers, meant that like I had no confidence that they were going to be a success, and, and I just did not play on them. And then, like, that was it. Uh, Lineage 2 officially died for me at the end of Classic. Private servers were dying like flies. Even the retail project just died, just like all of the private servers did in the exact same way. It started with 6,000 people online and it dropped to like less than a thousand within months. And I was just convinced that there was no hope to ever see a stable server. And I moved on, mostly playing Final Fantasy XIV. Then, one late November day in 2020, I decided to go on YouTube. I entered something to the effect of Lineage 2 PvP in the search bar and sorted to only seeing videos from the last month. And like 90% of them told the same story. Reborn. Here was not only a server that had been up for almost over a year, it had a big population. It was running an old version of the game, Interlude. No dual boxing, aggressive anti-botting and RMT policies. It looked like everything I had wanted from previous private servers that I had been burned by. And so I was a little bit cautious that like it would be the same thing. So I did not really want to jump in full force. I was very cautious entering the server. But the more I ended up playing the server, the more I figured out that not only was this server not dying, it was still growing. Literally the impossible was happening. The server was a year old and it was growing. So let's talk a bit about Reborn as a server. When I started it, it was running Java. The client was pretty buggy. AoE was broken as hell with all mobs stacking onto a single pixel. And there was quite a bit of drama around some GM decisions as well, which has not really dissipated too much with time, but they do what they can. And one at one point, nearly an entire alliance quit over the bending of a single player, and it disbanded or at least dispersed entirely. And make no mistakes, the GMs they're not perfect, like some amount of RMT and botting and general poor decision making by the gems will always come through. But I believe, having played on Reborn for about two years, 
that they care about the server success. That at the end of the day, Reborn is the most clean server in terms of botting an RMT that I have ever played on. And that is definitely something worthy of celebration and quite an achievement. So Reborn ran their one server, Origins, um, in Interlude. I don't know if it was even called Origins back then, but we'll, we'll roll with it at this point. They would host it for three years and they made huge improvements to the client and the game files in the meantime. And during that time, I myself transitioned from a filthy casual to playing this game more seriously than I have ever done before. Participating in proper endgame activities, fighting off epics, sieges, all in the beautiful clan of Abyss. A clan that literally rose from the ashes of insane to become the powerhouse that everybody knows it to be today. And I believe this was made possible the same way that Reborn as a whole was made possible. They simply had that sheer... the sheer willingness to refuse to die. And the same can be said for New Order to a large extent. Like, Abyss and New Order as sides, they just refuse to die. And while other sides have come and gone like Aliens, or Last Rite, or Skynet, these two sides just live on and they likely are strong enough to survive anything and will be there until the server literally just stops hosting this until reborn literally stops hosting the server once reborn had their three-year milestone they moved on to hellbound which considering the nuclear heavy meta that was going on at the time i wasn't very keen by this um I saw a lot of issues with Nuker Imbalance going into Hellbound in terms of their damage output especially. But I also saw a lot of cool elements coming into um, coming into Hellbound in terms of the PvE and the quests and the new areas that I had not properly explored, let alone on a low rate server. So I definitely decided to give it a shot, but as it turns out, the imbalance for Nukers was just way too much for me. And I ended up quitting the server well before I really wanted to. And of course, uh, Reborn moving away from the classic client onto a different client, which performed way worse, did not help matters whatsoever. And instead of making changes to Nukers to tone them down just a little bit, the administration decided to just move ahead and go to Grasha 1 instead. And while obviously Grasha 1 brought much needed rebalancing to Nukers, it also brought a whole list of other changes that wasn't really... Like, I wanted to explore Hellbound more in the way Hellbound was, and I just feel Reborn never really got that opportunity. So I found myself disinterested with the game, just like I did back in the day with Retail. I quit Retail back in the day primarily because of how pervasive botting was. But the game version itself definitely did not help. The grind cycle consisting of separated areas from the open world, making sideshows of what was previously main content such as sieges and some of the epics, and above all increasing the amount of things you need to have on a character to be competitive, they were advancing expansions at a rate that kind of lacked the magic that Reborn in the interlude era had for me. One of the things that made Reborn during the interlude time great as well was the fact that it would still be there. You could conceivably take a break from the game, pause the endless grind and do something else and then come back to the same world. The problem with putting the current game with the known mechanics and metas is that the grind never stops. Every expansion there are a million new things to grind for and you have to achieve them in order to be competitive. To get attributes, to get dynasty, to get Icarus, Vorpal, Vesper, to get super high enchanted skills, protection of rune, elemental, fighter's will, archer's will, getting S grade t-shirts, getting S grade like talismans, bracelets, like the list just goes on and on and just more stuff gets added onto the game increasing the enormous list of vertical progression while not taking anything out from the start except speeding it up slightly. I kind of feel that unless you are in that cycle the entire time and staying on top of it, you are going to be falling behind and it also increases the gap for new players more and more and 
I have not tracked the activity of the server, like the admins will know the online numbers, but I feel that's also part of a big reason why old retail died, is because it just became inaccessible. When S grade is no longer good enough and A grade is practically hopeless, I kind of feel the game loses a lot of its magic. Lineage 2 has ever been about vertical progression, but I feel they focused too much on it. They end up creating a treadmill to keep the current player base playing by giving them more things to work towards. But simultaneously, they massively increase the time required for a new player to become relevant in endgame content. And this just made it a lot harder for new players to come into the game and find an enjoyable time. It became the case that either you were in the endgame, grinding away at the cutting edge, or you were just a one-shot for the people who were. So that brings me to Signature, a Chronicle 4 to Chronicle 5 to Interlude server on the Reborn brand. It's due to start in November. And while November is still very far away, for a lot of people, with my background and how much I have been burned by private servers, I feel comfortable waiting it out because I kind of don't trust anyone else with my playtime at this point except for Reborn. So to make it absolutely clear, I don't want to play on it specifically because Chronicle 4. I want to play on it because it's an interlude or pre-interlude server that's hosted by Reborn. Which means I know I will have confidence investing my time in that server. And a lot of players will as well as a lot of players are still investing years and years into the current cycle of Reborn servers. So like many older versions of Lynch 2... Uh, what sets C4 apart, Chronicle 4, is not so much by what it does differently, but it's just lack of stuff that came later. We all know what the game has gone on to become, we all know what the meta was in those days and what it will be afterwards. Especially with the extensive experience that derived from running Interlude for 3 years. But for the unacquainted, let's quickly go over what Chronicle 4 brings to the table and what new things um, C4 brought compared to Chronicle 3. Chronicle 4 introduced S-grade armors and weapons, it introduced Noblesse, it introduced Olympiad alongside heroes, Valakas was new to Chronicle 4, which means Emcrit Bonanza, Goddard and Rune areas were introduced, but the sieges were not functional yet. The castles were there, but you couldn't do anything with them, I believe. Dimensional Rift was introduced, Skill enchanting was introduced here. The level cap was raised from 75 to 78. And the third class change was introduced. As you can see, Chronicle 4 was quite a big expansion. It had put in a lot of pieces that were taken for granted in Interlude. But these are things that Chronicle 4 has got. So what doesn't C4 have? The best way to describe what C4 lacks is to describe what C5 and Interlude added, because we kind of all know what Interlude has. So if we work our way to the differences between Chronicle 4 and Interlude, you'll know pretty much exactly what to expect for the most part. So what did Chronicle 5 bring? It raised the level cap from 78 to 80. It significantly increased HP regeneration for characters level 40 and below. It added herbs, which was especially helpful to solo players and small parties, so as you can imagine, I am a big fan. Maximum clan level got increased from level 5 to level 8, and similarly it implemented clan skills. And then it increased the clan size to hold 120 members plus 20 more in the academy, up from 40. And then alongside this, it decreased the amount of clans that could fit in the alliance from 12 to 3. Which means that in Chronicle 4, we're gonna see a lot more small clans rather than a few big ones. Goddard and Rune got their respective castle sieges, and Rune got its seven brand new clan halls. Chronicle 5 also added Pagan's Temple, Staccato's Nest, Monastery of Silence, and Frozen Labyrinth and Pelver Ruins, along with the areas that kind of surround those. It added special teleportation options for Noblesse characters. And it introduced the first cursed weapon, Zuri. <laughs> and finally it changed a whole host of skills, adding many skills that are very class defining and iconic, such as Rapid Fire, Arrest, Tribunal, Judgment, Mortal Strike, Sand Bomb, Zealot, Infernal Form, Greater Might and Shield and their derivatives, Clarity, 
Mana Burn and Mana Storm, Angelic Icon and Erase. To name most of them, there is a little list of skills that I've not mentioned directly yet. And it also changed some skills dramatically. It massively increased the casting time on Sleep and Sleeping Cloud and introduced Trance in its stead, which was only accessible to support classes mostly. And very similarly, it nerfed Greater Heal and Greater Group Heal to do a lot less straight up healing and introducing a healing over time effect and instead introducing Major Heal and Major Group Heal to take their place. And many other skills were also adjusted to certain degrees at this time. And that's not everything. Something I almost forgot to include in this video as well is a whole bunch of new weapons introduced in Chronicle 5 that fill some rather important gaps uh, that would otherwise appear within the weapon sets in the game. I'm particularly thinking here of the Guardian Sword, top B grade two-handed sword, as well as the Infernal Master, which is a low A grade two-handed sword. A whole bunch of one-handed magic swords, of which the most interesting are probably the Mysterious Sword, the Ecliptic Sword and the Wizard's Tear. Uh, and pretty much all of the two-handed fighter blunts prior to S grade. And a whole bunch of one-handed magic blunts also prior to S grade. So, a lot of mid-tier weapon gaps get filled in this patch. It's going to be really interesting when the only two-handed sword, like high-grade two-handed sword, besides the Heaven's Divider, is going to be the Dragon Slayer. So you're going to see a lot more Dragon Slayers flying about. And then the changes from Interlude. One of the biggest things that Interlude introduced were Shadow Weapons, making the early game especially a lot easier. It introduced Akamana, it introduced top A grade, such as Serra's Blade and Typhon's Spear. It massively reduced the experience loss for characters above level 76 upon death, which up to that point they lost as much at the higher level as they did at lower levels. It introduced weapon augmentation and life stones. All of the level 80 bubble skills, such as Day of Doom and more importantly Flames of Invincibility were added. And then of course it also added Swoop Cannon, yes. That swoop cannon. It introduced command channel, it introduced looting rights, and of course, related to everything mentioned before, it introduced Primeval Isle. And while they weren't used yet at that point, it also introduced fortresses into the game world. So if you ever play on the interlude server, you can go to all the different fortresses but there's nothing to do with them yet. That was in not introduced until later, which also kind of implies the direction the game is going at that point. And then of course, there's all the other skills that Interlude brought to the table to name a few of the more impactful ones. There's Invocation, Aura Flash, that's the AOE one that cancels target, not to be confused with Aura Flare, Sonic Move, uh, the Celestial Shield effects, uh, Celestial Shield, Sonic Barrier and Force Barrier. Um, that is of course, in as well as Flames of Invincibility, previously mentioned. Gate Chant is going to be missing. All of the level 78 passives like Archery, Assassination, Master of Combat and Divine Lore. Uh, Song of Silence, Mirage, Dodge and Counter Attack, the level 79 dagger skills, the feline, Summon Feline King, Magnus the Unicorn, uh, Spectre Lord, the level 79 Summoner Summons, Cleanse, Salvation, Victories of Pagrio. It's gonna definitely change the, the overall interaction of the PvP, um, especially considering, of course, in Chronicle 4, Greater Heal is still gonna be like super good. So I, I assume between these things, the Bishop is gonna be less of a super critical pick. Um, and like a bunch of these things, especially thinking about like Gate Chant and Victory of Pagrio, is gonna change how CPs operate dramatically. And of course the lack of any celestial effects, both in terms of the actual skills, as well as of course the ability to get them through augmentations, as well as the lack of active nuke augmentations, is gonna really shake up how Olympiad functions, on top of course of all of the missing skills. I'm especially curious to see how Elven Elders and Bishops Lacking both active nukes and mana burn are gonna handle Olympiads because they're probably gonna be nowhere near even like remotely on the same level as they are on interlude and afterwards. 
And of course, in, in general terms, the lack of invocation is gonna really increase the, the, the hurtfulness of lacking herbs as well. Uh, mana is gonna be a lot harder to come by. So if you're a nuker, you're really gonna have to take care of your rechargers, because you're going to need them. <laughs> you're going to need them a lot more than they need you. And just in case you're wondering about how old these versions are, Interlude also stopped supporting Windows 98. <laughs> it's, it really is that old. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, starting uh, on Chronicle 4 will feel pretty bare bones. Um, it will feel like suffering, especially below level 40 and above level 76, where the XP loss will get you. Uh, bubbles will not be a thing. Monastery Silence won't be a thing. So what, what are the intricacies? Like, where, where can we still go? What can we still do in Chronicle 4? Well, we'll still have Varkan Ketcha for S-grade armor recipes. We'll still have Imperial Tomb and Forge of Gods for weapon recipes. And we'll still have all of these areas for Xping. So in many ways, I feel that Chronicle 4's endgame is going to be pretty similar to what we used to have on Interlude. With a few really key differences, obviously not having bubbles is going to be huge in endgame fights. Uh, obviously not having augments is going to make a huge difference in Olympiad as well as endgame fights. I believe to have heard that you can still drop your gear as well upon a PvE death. I have not been able to really find that in the patch notes, but I heard that was changed in Chronicle 5 compared to Chronicle 4. And probably like one of the most interesting things is just a political landscape. Having a whole lot of small clans scattered about rather than a few big clans is going to make sieges feel a lot more dynamic. It's going to be a lot harder to coordinate. Clan halls especially are going to be like much more contested, I expect. Especially considering like not only are we lacking like capacity per clan hall, but you're also going to be dealing with the fact that runes clan halls, which are seven really high grade clan halls, are not going to be available. Which means that there's probably going to be a lot more focus in open worlds. You're going to have a lot less alt clans just taking in random people for a fee per month. Except for maybe really shitty clan halls like Dion. Because, like, there's just not the capacity to do that. I'm honestly, like, really looking forward mostly to the sieges and just seeing the amount of flags that get put up on the siege field. It's gonna really feel like one of those preview, like, CGI videos of back in the day. And if, by any chance, there's a Reborn admin still watching at this point in the video, please, 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 please do one custom thing and one thing only on Signature cap the M crit rate at 20%. Don't nerf the damage, don't nerf the sleep, don't do anything else, just cap the maximum M crit rate. Heck, not, maybe not even 20%, maybe just cap it like 50%. Just cap it at something so we can avoid the future ridiculous situation of whatever we're seeing in the background now. I know this likely won't be a serious problem until interlude because of augments. And even though only a top few lucky players who will be able to play with MCRIT rates this high, it will make fights very unfun for anyone they face, and I feel it's prudent to avoid the problem, if at all possible. Nukers will still be more than strong enough, mass PvPs are still going to be extremely nuker-centric, simply because of how strong their AoEs are, their damage cannot be avoided in any way, and skills such as cancel, which are extremely important. In all honesty, I'm not expecting you to do this change, but I would be extremely happy if you do, and I think in the long run, the server will be a lot better for it. So asking is the least I can do. Thank you. But beyond that, like, yeah, Chronicle 4 is going to be really rough to start with. The HP regeneration, like, below level 40 is going to hurt a lot. I had a brief look at the other progressive server, Elmer Lab, which is currently in Chronicle 4. I believe I tried in Chronicle 3 or maybe in Chronicle 4, I'm not sure. But I tried it up to level 20, just for the hell of it. And I noticed that, like, that HP regeneration difference makes a huge difference. I, th I think people are, like... The game is a, feels a lot slower and a lot more boring to a lot of people, but they can never quite place why. And I honestly feel that this HP regeneration is a decent big chunk of why. 
because if you just have more HP regeneration, you can stay in combat more, you can kill mobs a lot more frequently without having to worry about spamming potions the whole time. And like, you can just get away with a lot more AoE especially as well. So I feel like this is a pretty decent chunk of the reason why the early game is so slow in the old version of the game. Because once you get up to speed, you get some gear, you get going pretty easily. Uh, and of course, speaking about getting over the early game, the lack of shadow weapons. Money is going to be a lot more important in C4 than it is in Interlude, and especially compared to Brasha Final. So yeah, uh, I'm basically just running out of thoughts at this point. Um, so yeah, I really hope that when Reborn comes out with Signature, they do something sensible. If they cap M-Crit rate, I'm gonna be the happiest person on planet Earth. Uh, and like hopefully we'll get like maybe a year for Chronicle 4, a year for Chronicle 5 and a year for Interlude at the minimum Which means we would get a three-year server, which would be fantastic After that they can keep it Interlude until the end of time They can maybe play around with going into Hellbound As long as they just don't push it too much beyond Hellbound But you know at that point we'll be four years in I'm sure, like, similarly with Origins, not too many people can complain too hard if at that point that they decide to move on. Even though it's not for me, I understand, like, you know, at a certain point in time, people have gone everywhere, they have done everything, and getting something new into the server will maybe help keep the player base alive. I really hope Signature is going to be everything that we dream it to be, and I really look forward to playing there. And if anyone can tolerate having me around as a Silver Ranger, and I'm not necessarily looking for a CP, though I'm still really contemplating what I'm gonna do when I get there. I might even start up a clan again, considering small clans means there's gonna be a lot more focus on having small leadership, because you're gonna have a lot more clan leaders instead of a big clan with officers in it. Because when I look at Abyss, which is, you know, a huge clan at this point. I don't know how many members they have, but they have well over a hundred members. And they have like, you know, the clan leader and they have like three, maybe four officers and a lot of CP leaders. But in C4 times, it's gonna be like every officer that's just an officer in a clan now is basically going to have to be a clan leader in their own clan. So in that sense, it's gonna be a lot more divided, but I feel that also means that each small clan, so long as it consists of real players, is going to be more of a small community. And it's going to probably feel all, a lot more cozy. And, and I assume like a huge uptick in, in ally chat usage and such. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to expect, but what I do expect, I'm kind of looking forward to. So keep up the good work. Please do not delay the server. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. I'm so tired of screaming. Empty streets are all I see As I'm walking down this broken road The path to nowhere leads me home Burned down with an echo Days come but they don't go Why's the world I'm living in so fucked up beyond recognition? I can't spend another night Living life like I'm falling on the knife Cause it pulls up the breath from my lungs till I'm dead I can't get up the thoughts in my head I'm so tired of
In Chronicle 4, you still had like f maximum 40 people per clan. Wait, is that not in my notes somewhere? What the fuck is wrong with me?